there folks. So today I am going to show you how to download, set up, do some basic configuration for the RPCS3. This is Sony PlayStation 3 emulator. Now one thing to keep in mind, this emulator is still, still in like pre-alpha release as you can see up here, which means there's a lot of work on it. So don't expect games to run perfect full speed without glitches and all that. There's um, very few games that, like commercial games, disc games that actually run. Um, I'll show you a compatibility list that um, has all the games that do run so that you guys aren't requesting me to, hey, try out, you know, The Last of Us or try out this AAA title game because a lot of the AAA title games, not a lot of them, but most of them, practically all of them do not work yet. Um, but the uh, emulator has made a lot, of, a lot of quick progress here lately. And I, I, think, uh, I think I know why. Um, for one reason, we got some awesome devs and they've got this Patreon page where... Um, if you really like the simulator, I recommend that you become a patron and, you know, donate to them. That'll help the emulator progress quicker and it'll help them to um, get games running a lot better for your computer. So first things first, um, I'll link this in the description it's to the free emulator website where you can download the version, um, as of today, the one that I'm using for the first couple videos. You just fill in this CAPTCHA, hit the hip that, and download it. And it'll download, let's see, this file right here. I've got a couple in here because I was testing this out a couple days ago as well. Or if you want the absolute latest version, which they, they pump out version all the time, new versions, you can go to rpcs3.net and then click on the little menu bar, go here to download. And then you can download the latest build right here from app Veyer, I guess is what that's called. Surveyor, at Veyer, I don't know. But the very latest one, which is the one I just showed you in the link here, will be right here. But like I said, this is just updated seven hours ago. So new updates come through all the time. Get the latest one and you'll be good to go. All right, a couple more things I want to show you. Compatibility list. I'll put all these links in the description if I remember. So do not request me to, to try out games that are already on the compatibility list listed as, you can see here there's five tiers here, playable, in-game, intro, loadable, nothing. I'm not gonna do these right here. Intro, you know, I might consider testing some of the games, but probably not. So these two are the ones I'll focus on, or if they're games that are on the list that I have, I might do some videos of it. So yeah, you've got quite the list here. You can search for games. So let's just say, I've already done that search before, Dragon Ball. So you got a couple different options here. You got different regions. You got um, whether it's a disc game or a PSN game. Um, and yeah, so Burst Limit is playable and I'm gonna show you that here in just a minute. So yeah, go through here. You can click on these um, letters, numbers, figure out which games work and which ones don't as of right now. This gets updated fairly frequently for a lot of games, a good game. You can see this one pretty recent, this one not not quite so much, but a lot of these do say 2017, so that's pretty good. Another one, um, there's a decent amount of setup you have to do for this emulator to get working right. So I'm gonna refer you to the quick start, for some of the terms and the requirements and stuff you need, and this frequently asked questions, the fact page. Um, and I'll link this too, the uh, MU News is the official um, forum for this emulator and this is a great post by Annie here just on if you're a noob setting this all up there's a lot to do one thing you will have to do is dump dump the firmware files off an actual ps3 I cannot provide those files to you because they have copyright Sony uh, files in them so you're on your own to either dump it or I mean there are other places you can search <coughs> Google <coughs> where you can search and find them and that is a file I'll show you real quick. So those files you need, you want to put them all in here. They are, they are I believe these are plug-in files, um, LLE plug-in files to actually make certain aspects of games run correctly. And this is the probably the most annoying part of the emulator is that you can't just like boot up a game and good to go. You're going to have to know which one of these to use, which you can do that based on watching videos, or um, right here, what LLE modules, I call them plugins earlier, whatever. 
Um, this explains exactly how to figure out which ones you need for each game in your log file, um, which there's a log down here, and it also saves the log file here in this main directory where you have it installed. Um, it'll it'll tell you roughly um, what modules you need to install. All right, so moving on now to some configuration. We'll go through all these. So boot elf cell file. There are certain like homebrew files, I believe, that use this format. Boot game. If you don't put the games in the directory at once for the list here, you can just browse to it yourself. I'll show you real quick. Go to your install folder to get them to show up here. Go to your install folder, dev underscore hard drive zero game, and then pop your games in right there. Pop them in right there and you're good to go. And now uh, let me just show you real quick the format. So you want them in this format. You have the PS3 underscore game and updates, just like if you have custom firmware on your PS3, it's the same format. If you have a game in the .iso, .iso format, you can uh, mount that image with a program like Daemon Tools, or you can just extract it with a program like WinRAR and get these files, and then you can add it to here. Um, let's see what's next. Install package file. That's for like a lot of PSN type of games. If you want to try those out with the emulator, they don't normally come um, in the file structure that I showed you a second. We'll have to install it this way. All right, system. This is just when the game's running. Some things you can do. Resume, stop, blah, blah, blah. Don't have to mess with that too much. Uh, I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. You don't. I haven't had to deal with it yet. I've only tried out a couple games. I'm pretty new to the emulator myself, but I've been doing a lot of reading. So go to config settings. It takes a second sometimes to load. So core here, the PPU decoder. Um, the precise is more accurate, but it's slower. Uh, the interpreter is pretty good. It's kind of your default, what you want to use. Um, if a game works pretty well with this, then you can try out the LLVM recompiler. It, it might run the game a little bit faster, but definitely start off trying it with this. The SPU decoder, I'm just going to leave it at recompiler. I haven't even messed with these others. I don't think I don't think you'll you'll really need to. I mean, if the game's not working, you've tried everything you think of, it might be worth trying those out. Now, here's the kind of annoying part about the emulator, the time-consuming, the load libraries, the modules, plugins, whatever you want to call them. The ones that are checked are in alphabetical order, but there's this long list that I showed you earlier. These are the files you have to dump from a PS3. And now each game requires specific ones. So far, the first two games that I've tried here, the Dragon Ball Z vs. Limited Digimon All-Star Rumble, they all work with the same ones here. But once you start up a game, the log file will tell you what you need if you're missing any of them. And I think I read that, I haven't tried it, but it's not a good idea to check all these. Um, so you'll, you'll want to know specifically which ones, which um, I'll try to provide that in all my videos. Guys like John God Games here on YouTube, he does that as well. Um, he'll show in the video, you know, which ones of these you need. And you can refer, let me go back here to this forum. Go to the commercial games, and let's just go to playable. And you have all these... Uh, like here's the game I was testing out. A lot of times they'll provide a log file for you, and a lot of times people will tell you on the forums if you search through there enough which one of these you need for specific games. All right, moving on. Graphics, the render. Um, it's a good idea to try out OpenGL Direct 3D 12 and Vulkan. If you're running Windows 10, you can do Direct 3D 12, and if you have a, a GPU that supports Vulkan, try them out. So far for these first two games, um, Vulkan has had the best performance graphically and speed-wise for me. That's not always going to be the case. Some games are going to run better with Direct3D 12 or maybe OpenGL. So um, I like to just start out with Vulkan, see how that works. And uh, if I'm satisfied with it, good. If I'm not satisfied with it, then try out one of these others. I'd probably go Direct3D 12 next and OpenGL last would be the order I would try out. Then aspect ratio, if for whatever reason you're uh, using a four by three monitor, you can do that, 16 by nine. Resolution, so um, I believe the RPCS3 devs recommend using whatever native resolution the game supports. 
like the max. So um, like on the back of the box cover of a game, it'll tell you whether it's 720p, 1080p. I'm going to leave it. Most games do just run at 720p. I mean, there are some, quite a few actually, that do run at 1080p. But for this purpose of this video, we're just going to leave it at 720p for now. So auto for the frame limit. Let me see. So yeah, you can you can restrict it to certain frame limits. I like to just leave it at auto for most games. If you leave it off, it'll just run as fast as a game can render with your um, hardware. And so maybe run way too fast. So yeah, auto is good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Direct 3D adapter. Just choose um, your graphics card, your GPU. You don't want to use this Microsoft Basic. It'll render like crap. And then I like to do check VSync. It'll hit help with screen tearing. If you have any um, issues with certain games that you think should run well, you can try to turn that off just to, just to double check. Sometimes it could cause issues with certain games. Um, audio, I've only ever tested out X-Audio 2. Um, from what I understand, the devs, the emulator, they haven't really focused a ton on audio yet. It's not one of their priorities. So you're not going to great, get great audio with a lot of games, but just leave it on X Audio 2 for now. Input output. So I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. So I think by default this is set to keyboard or null. So I like to just leave it or put it on X input here. Um, camera. I've got null and fake. I'm not going to mess with that. And then keyboard. I'll just have it on basic. And this thing is tab, network, system. You can uh, change that to English. I think it's set by Japanese by default, if I'm not mistaken. Or whatever language you speak. Put it on whatever it is that you're using the console for. Okay, well, let me just double check. Okay, so that's everything here in the settings that you need to be aware of. One last thing, though, pad settings. This confused me at first. I was like, okay, I'm going to need to... If I'm going to use the Xbox 360 controller, you know, you got to go in here and map it. But that's not true. You cannot remap the controls with the Xbox 360 controller. If I click it, I'm hitting up. You can hear me clicking away. It's not doing anything. So just hit W. You can't remap it for this, but the controls are already set up by default and they work just fine. So you don't even have to mess with that. Just thought I'd make you aware because, like I said, I spent some time trying to map it before I ever tried playing the game. And then I looked online and Someone else said, hey, you don't have to do that. So, so we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and boot up uh, Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit real quick and double click it. So you can see it's running on Vulcan. Let me move this over here a little bit. The log files down here, all these different uh, modules are running to get the game going. Some of these games take a you know a good 10, 15 seconds to boot up. So here we go with that. Um, yeah, I'm hitting start on the Xbox 360 controller. It's working just fine. In a lot of these games, the menus and the intro videos maybe will run real fast. Like full speed like this, 60 frames a second. You, gotta be like, you may be like, oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. These are going to run great. But then in game, it'll the performance will drop. But that is going to be it for this video, folks. I hope I helped you out in trying to set this emulator. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll try to answer them, or if not me, hopefully when uh, you... Guys that watch these videos will do it for me. Okay, bye-bye now.